Hi, and welcome back to DevExplaining channel. Today, I'm revisiting a topic I did last year, uh, which Java should you install in your machine? Uh, this year, uh, the topic is slightly different and things have changed a little bit. So I thought it was uh, worth to do another video. I'll also include links to some of my previous videos. Uh, for example, how I like to set up my development environment. But I think let's get started. So the first thing you should decide is whether you are deploying to your development environment or whether you are deploying to your deployment environment, which might be a different thing. Uh, second thing, uh, do you want to include money or uh, does everything need to be free? And third question is, what's your platform? Because there might be some differences. And you put all these things together and an answer will emerge. So I'll, I'll be diving in a bit deeper and explaining a few of popular choices and how that works. And I hope that will help you. Speaking of which, if you get any value or entertainment from my videos, you know the drill, click the buttons, drop some feedback and share the link, please. That would, that would be good for you and for me. But I think without further ado, let's see some choices. So my first recommendation, if you are in a developer uh, workstation laptop, uh, why not have a capability of installing multiple choices? So I, I typically set up a SDK man, and that works awesomely in any uh, Unix-based platform. So whether it's Linux or Mac OS, um, it's, it, this will work for you. For Windows, you need to do a bit more involved setup, but it's still possible to install multiple versions and just swap between them. So for example, here is my SDK man, and if I list my Java choices, I have a lot of them. Now, uh, last year's video had a little bit different list, so that was one reason why I wanted to revisit the topic, because uh, let's say there is no Adopt Open JDK anymore, um, and uh, there is a new Oracle Java that gives you some new options, and there's some other choices going on. So uh, another thing here is that for each option like Coretto, you get multiple versions that you can choose to install. And you can install any combination, and for each project you can then experiment with version 8, with version 11, with version 17, whatever you like. And I like to often double with the future, so under java.net, I could already install Java 19 and start playing with that one if I like. At some point I do like, but not today. Okay, so... Um, all of these builds are pretty much nowadays based on OpenJDK. So your most question is um, what OpenJDK build you want? And then second question would be what kind of tooling and support model you want around that one? You have a lot of choices that you can see here. So how to read this list? Well, you can start with uh, either the OpenJDK Java.net bundling, but that's really not well supported bundling. Um, it will support for a bit of time, but there's no defined long-term support model. But you can get Oracle bundling, and uh, that used to be all about commercial offering. But nowadays there's also the, this is new thing from last year. So since September 2021, Oracle now has a free use license for all users of uh, Oracle JDK for Java 17. So you could go with this one, and this allows you to deploy without paying the license fee and use the Oracle build of OpenJDK. So probably a valid choice, but uh, my question is, this is a special license. So if I choose this one, I would really like to read it carefully. And uh, since I have other choices that are using a bit more traditional licensing, I've so far been sticking to those ones. But this is definitely a new option since last year that you, you can choose to do. Another, th another thing to mention here is that uh, the kind of support model is rather interesting. So here is the premier support until uh, that's a little bit traditional. Traditional, so Java 8 support uh, ending this year, Java 11 support ending next year, Java 17 will go on for a bit of time. Then we have extended support, and uh, that's crazy because for Java 8 by paying for the extended support, you would uh, keep on going until 2030, right? That's pretty crazy. So uh, as always, you pay a little bit more and you get uh, extended uh, support. You get a phone number where you can call and you might get some extra tooling uh, that's uh, specific to the paid model. Now, 
here is my typical choice out of the choices I have. So I'm typically using something that used to be called Adopt Open JDK because that's a pre-built Open JDK binary. There is no extra specific tooling. There is definitely no um, like uh, somebody you can call and yell and uh, request immediate fix. But there is a support organization for the long-term support models. So you can go here and the name has changed because it's uh, now adopted by Eclipse. So the project is now called Adoptium and the build is now called Temurin. So you can actually see it here. We don't have Adopt Open JDK option anymore, but we have Temurin. As you can see, I'm running Temurin um, packaging 17.0, and I should really update to the available 17.0.2. It's a minor update, so bug fixes and security patches is included. So definitely good idea to update there. But it's under Temurin, and I, other options I have are 8 and 11. I could also install those ones. Okay, so Adoptium Temurin is the new Adopt Open JDK, and the interesting thing is that this is a free, um, this is a free um, option. There is a blogs explaining this one, but there is a defined support model, so they are supporting by uh, packaging the bug fixes uh, to the core. When new things are discovered, they get packaged, and you get new builds. And uh, for the 17, they haven't decided when it will end. As a general philosophy, they continue to build binaries as long as the source code corresponding to that gets some updates. So as long as somebody updates source code, they will do builds, run the tests, make it available. So for my developer laptop, this has been a pretty good option. I typically just slap a few versions of Temurin right now depending on my needs and choices. So pretty good option. You get support, you don't need to pay anything. So scales from free, dabbling all the way to the commercial work and large teams, if you like. Quite easy model in, in such way. What other options do we have? Well, I would like to mention Amazon Coretto. Definitely nice, no-cost, multi-platform, production-ready distribution. It's available for many, many platforms and supported by Amazon. So they have some muscle to do the builds there and do good releases. Um, this is a little bit more perhaps geared towards uh, Amazon virtual machines, but it's not limited there. I could get Coretto, get it on my machine, and it's uh, yet another supported but free build. So pretty, pretty cool offering. As you can see, for Coretto, I could go with the 8, 11, 17. I have some choices here. Uh, Azul, another excellent option. Azul offers both uh, the kind of uh, free basic builds, but then you have the commercial options where you get a little bit more. And as you can see, there is pricing and there is much more that you get uh, by going that route. So again, uh, the same question as with the IDs. Um, there is an option to put some money and then you figure out if you get money's worth back. But there's pretty much always also free option. And because you are able to install any of these, so you can you can drop the free Azul, you can supplement that with a free Temurin, you can supplement that with a Microsoft Open JDK. I didn't mention it right now, but definitely worth mentioning. It's basically an Open JDK build. And for those old timers like I am who remember the uh, Java Virtual Machine Wars way back when we had Sun, uh, my, my Sun Virtual Machine versus the Microsoft. Things have changed quite a lot since then, so now the Microsoft build is actually actually much more valid and, and fun. Uh, JDKJava.net build, um, you could put the Oracle build uh, using the free license. So you have a lot of options. You could put Coretto and you could just uh, swap across them and play, play with them. But as I mentioned, my no-hassle version has been this one for quite a long time. So I've been happy with that. It's enough for my developer laptop. Then for the deployments, I need to consider what's the deployment environment, what's the pricing model, um, is the company willing to pay for extra premium support, extended support, or is it enough to just run uh, something that's supported uh, long enough? And how long support do I really need? How aggressively uh, will I be updating my Java in deployment environments? 
My answer would be quite aggressively because uh, I like to update as fast as I can to keep in the release train and get the new latest features. But if there is a project that's in kind of slower support phase, there is not much resources, perhaps it's using Java 8 and uh, leveraging heavily some features that uh, require changes in the, in the system uh, to update to 11 or 17. In that case, I understand then it might make sense to just pay for the support until 2030 and just delay or buy more time to, to do the updates or see if the software lifecycle will even end before 2030. Okay, so as always, I hope this one was useful for you. Um, I have a request for you. Um, if you have a favorite uh, build or favorite version, drop it in the comment section below. Um, let me know if there is kind of favorite uh, Java virtual machine built for you and let me know why. So are you preferring just the java.net builds or do you enjoy the Adoptium, Coretto, Azul? Uh, let me know in the comment section uh, and especially drop why. What differentiates it? Because that might be interesting for the others. As always, I promise to read all the comments, uh, respond to them. And if you have a question, drop it there as well. If you have some ideas for future videos you would like to see, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, thanks for watching this one and see you in the next one. Bye bye.